So in your linear algebra class, you'll only ever really deal with linear transformations. Um, what does that mean? What is a linear transformation as opposed to other kinds of transformations? Well, it means that uh, when you think about it geometrically, if you do the transformation to all the vectors in your like dimensional space, whatever, uh, all the grid lines remain parallel and evenly spaced. So I plagiarized that straight from 3 blue, 1 brown. So watch his video on linear transformations. He'll give you a really good understanding of geometrically how to think about transformations, and he like animates everything very well. Uh, but in this video, I want to talk about how to actually determine if a transformation is linear, if it's described to you, described to you in a way similar to this, um, because this will show up on your homeworks um, and maybe quizzes and exams. Although in my experience as a TA, I've never really seen it on exams, but that's not to say that it won't show up for you guys in the future. So it's just good to know in case you see this. So uh, the three properties of a linear transformation. Before I go into these, first I want to give you a quick theorem. If you have a transformation defined as T of X equals A times X, so if a transformation has a, a standard matrix like this, then the transformation is linear. Um, so you don't have to check and go through these because it will automatically satisfy these three conditions. You can prove that to yourself if you want to. Um, but if your transformation is described in a way like this where it tells you the output vectors of the transformation in terms of the components of your input vectors, then uh, you have to go through and check these three properties. And so if the transformation that you're looking at fails to meet at least one of these three properties, it's not linear. But if it meets all three, then it's linear. So the three properties are the first one, the simplest one. The transformation is linear if, in order for it to be a linear transformation, it has to um, take the zero vector as an input and then output the zero vector. So t of the zero vector equals the zero vector. Um, this one's like usually pretty easy to check. The second property is that the transformation of a sum of vectors equals the sum of the transformation of the individual vectors. So you have to kind of be able to like, you can think of it as distribute the t to through the sum to each of the vectors. And then the third property is you have to be able to like factor out the any scalar multiple. So the transformation of c times x has to equal c times the transformation of x. So let's go through these three transformations, s, t, and u, described up here, and see if it meets these three conditions. And remember, if it fails at least one, it's not linear. So for this first one, the transformation s is takes vectors in R2, transforms them into output vectors in R2, and it's given to be this. So your output vector has components x1 and 3 plus x2, where x1 and x2 are the components of your input vector. And so let's just check this first one. So spoiler alert, it's going to fail this. And then you can just move on. So like, look, so if you input the zero vector, so if you say something like s of, again, don't get, um, I talked about this in a past video, don't get like uh, thrown for a loop. Uh, if you see like your vectors written as like comma separated values like this, um, just think of it as this is a vector in R2 with components x1, x2. So you could say s of, if we check this first property, if we input the zero vector, s of 0, 0 has to equal 0, 0. But let's see if it actually does. So our output is the first component of our input is the first component of our output. So here, that's good. And then the second component of our output is 3 plus x2, which is the second component of our input here. So our second component of the output is 3 plus 0, or just 3. So here you can see we've inputted the zero vector, and we did not get the zero vector as an output. So it fails this first property, this first condition. And so we can move on. So if you see this on a test, like move on, save time. It failed one property, so it's not linear. So we're not even going to check for the other two. So this first one is not a linear transformation. Okay, what about the second one? It's this transformation T. Again, it goes from R2 to R2, and it's given in this different way. And really quick, there's a red, big, huge red flag right here. Um, just like if you do enough of these problems, you'll see like if you have components being multiplied together, if you see like a component squared or something, it's probably not going to be linear. And so if you're running out of time, you can just say, no, it's not linear. But let's go through and be thorough and actually check. So we have um, our transformation T defined to us like this. And so does it map the zero vector to the zero vector? Um, so if you input 0, so if x1 and x2 both equal 0, then do we get the 0 vector as an output? Well, the first component would be 0 minus 0, and the second component, which is 0. And the second component would be 0 times 0, so yes. So if we input the 0 vector into our transformation t, we get 0 vectors as an output. So it meets the first one. Let's check the second one. t of x plus y has to equal t of x plus t of y. So to do this, let's define some vectors. 
So let's say x, or sorry, let's say the vector a is, so this takes input vectors in R2. So let's say one input vector is a, and it has components a1, a2. And we'll have a different vector that we could input, call it b, and its components are b1 and b2. We're trying to keep this general so that we can say whether or not it meets this property for all cases. So what we're going to do is we're going to see, does t of a plus b equal t of a plus t of b? Question mark. So like we don't know. We, we need to see. So to, to determine this, we're going to actually compute both sides separately and then see in the end, are they equal? So we have to first do like, let's do this left side first. So t of a plus b. So let's see, what is a plus b? What vector is that? Because we're going to take that vector and input it and see what we get. So t of a plus b, or a plus b, that vector is you just add the components of a and b together. So you get the vector a1 plus b1 and a2 plus b2. So here's your vector a plus b. And we're going to input that into our transformation t. So we're going to do t of this vector. where So like x1, so x1 is a1 plus b1 and x2 is a2 plus b2. And it's defined to give us this output vector x1, x, x1 minus x2 and then x1 times x2. So let's see, t of a plus b is, we get the output vector. The first component of our output is, remember, it's the difference between the first and second entry. So we get a1 plus b1 minus a2 plus b2. This is our x1, this is our x2 as it was defined above. And then the second component of our output is the product of our entries of the input. So we get a1 plus b1 times a2 plus b2. So this looks kind of gross, right? We're going to get like an a1, a2 plus 2 or plus a b1, a2. Like you have to foil it and everything. So my hunch is it's not going to be linear. But let's just continue to check. So then we, so this is what we get on the left side, t of a plus b. So then on the right side, what do we get? t of a plus t of b. So what is t of just a? t of, our vector a was just a1, a2. And so t of a, a1, a2 is, um, first component of our output is this difference. So we get a1 minus a2. And the second component is a1 times a2. And then t of our b vector, right? Because we have to find t of a plus t of b. t of our b vector is b1, b2. And that gets us b1 minus b2, and then b1 times b2. So then we can add these, these together so we can find what is t of a plus t of b. Because we just found t of a and t of b separately. Now we add them together. So t of a plus t of b equals, we add this vector, or we, yeah, we add this vector to this vector. So I'm going to add these components together. a1 minus a2 plus b1 minus b2. And then our second one, our second component of ta plus tb is a1, a2 plus b1, b2. And so now we just have to see, does t of a plus b equal t of a plus t of b? So up here, here's our t of a plus b, and here's our t of a plus t of b, and are they equal? Well, the first entries, let's check, are they equal? a1 minus a2, so I could have moved this guy over to here, and I would get a1 minus a2 plus b1 minus b2. So like you can see, you can do the algebra yourself, but you can see the first components of these two vectors are the same. So, so far, so good, but let's look at the second component of t of a plus b gets us an a1 times a2, if we FOIL this, which is good, we get that here. And we have a b1 times b2 it, by FOILing, we get that here. But this this t of a plus b has extra terms here in the second component. It's going to have like a b1 times a2 and a a1 times b2, and that's not in, in the second component of just t of a plus t of b. So these two vectors are not equal. t of a plus b does not equal t of a plus t of b. And that's, that's our uh, condition that has to be met. We have to be able to distribute across a sum. So it doesn't meet our second condition. So it's not true that it's not true that t in part two is a linear transformation because 
while it meets the first condition, it doesn't meet the second. So we don't even have to check the third. We already know it's not linear. Okay, let's do it for this last one, part three. Um, now it's given, it takes input vectors in R2, transforms them into R3, uh, where your input vector is x1, x2, and here's how it defines your output vector. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is the transformation U. So first of all, okay, does it meet this first condition? If we input 0, 0 for x1 and x2, do we get the 0 vector as an output? Yeah, it looks like we do, because if x1 and x2 are both 0, then our output vector here is all zeros, right? So it meets the first condition. Let's see, does it meet the second condition? So let's use our same vectors a and b, defined this way. And let's find um, t of a. a plus b, so t of this vector. And then we'll do t of a and t of b individually, add them together to see if they're equal. So what is t of a plus b? So here's the vector a plus b. Right, we found this earlier. And what is the transformed matrix, or sorry, the transformed vector? Um, it's defined to be, now it's an R3, so the dimension changes, that's fine. But our output vector is negative x2 as the first component. So here's our x2, so negative that, negative a2 plus b2. And then our second component is x1, which is the first component of our input. So a1 plus b1, and then it says our third component is just always 0. So 0. Okay, here's t of a plus b. So now we got to find t of a and t of b, add them together and see if it equals t of a plus b. So t of just a is a1, a2, and our transformation defines the first component of our output to be negative x2, negative second component of your input. So negative a2, and then it would be a1 and 0. And then t of b, so you can see this is pretty tedious, right? t of b is here. And what does that get you? Well, going through the definition of how this transformation is defined, we get negative b2, b1, 0. Okay, then we just add these together. So t of a plus t of b is, is well, we just add the components together negative a2 minus b2, a1 plus b1, and 0. And now we have to see, does this t of a plus t of b equal t of a plus b? So are these two vectors equal to each other? And it looks like they are, because here you can distribute the negative sign. You'll get negative a2 minus b2. Here you get a1 plus b1. That's the same, and then 0 is the same. So perfect. So it looks like t of x plus y equals t of x plus t of y. So it meets the second condition too. So we're almost there. Does it meet the third one? Well, we have our first linear transformation in this video. So now we just have to see t of c times some vector, like let's use the a vector we came up with. Does that equal c times t of a? So to do this, we know what our a vector is. What is our vector c of a, c times a? So c times a is we just distribute c through and we get c a1 and c a2 and then uh, we do the transformation to this and we see if it equals the transformation of a just times c so let's see t of t of this input vector is what um, so here this is let's apply how our transformation is defined we do the first entry of our output is the negative second entry of our input so negative c a2 and then our second entry of our output is the first entry of our input. That's just how the transformation is defined. So we get C A1, and then our third component is always 0. And does this equal C times T of A? Well, we already found T of A. It's this one, right? T of A is negative A2, A1, and 0. So are these equal? Well, yeah, they are. You just distribute the C in here, and you get that the two vectors are equal. So we could, have, we could like, factor out this C of any vector because we kept a general input vector a so it works for all cases so uh so yes yeah, so you can like pull out the c from this transformation so it meets the third condition right here as well so it meets all three so that this transformation u is linear okay perfect so if you're given a problem like this just in summary all you have to do is go through and test each three of these conditions and see if it's met and to do that you just come up with generic vectors like a and b 
um, and then you you compute one side of it and you compute the other side of it and then you see does each side equal each other and then if it does then the conditions met um, and then also it's just very important if a transformation has a standard matrix like this then it's automatically linear okay hope that makes sense and I'll see you in the next video